it's a cat. It's, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, that's so nice. Okay, uh, my name is Chase. I'm a junior from Westside. Oh, that's my brother. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. December 20th, 1999. I was born seven pounds, 11 ounces, and given a pink pair of baby socks to match my XX chromosomes as if gender is just that simple. And as a child, it always made perfect sense to me that boy babies get blue socks while girl babies get pink socks and that those colors can dictate someone's entire life. What toys they'll play with, what clothes they'll wear, what gender they'll fall in and out of love with again and again and again and again and again, but a piece of fabric cannot tell a story. I was nine years old when I first heard the word transgender. I was watching TV in my parents' room when an ad came across the screen about a girl living in a boy's body. When I asked my grandmother later that night what the word meant, she answered boldly, as if the word was nothing to be ashamed of. It's when a boy feels more like a girl or a girl feels more like a boy, I nodded shyly. Thinking about it the entire way home, but when I got to my house in the refuge of my room, I burst into tears. Telling myself that I, now that I had a word to define myself, I could fix it. Fix. At nine years old, I thought I needed to be fixed. When puberty came around, I'd layer my shirts to hide my chest. I cut off all my hair in fifth grade and tried to fit in with the boys, but I couldn't understand why I wasn't like them. When I turned 13, I stopped trying to be comfortable. I wore makeup and dresses and female pronouns like a proud woman should, but I am not a proud woman. When I turned 15, I decided that I did not need to change. I did not need to hide my hips or my body or my identity. I was not ashamed of who I was, and I do not need to fix myself. Not my lack of jawline or my high voice. When your faucet is leaking, you don't buy a new house, you call a plumber. <laughs> when I was born, I was given a pink pair of socks to match the sex that my body assigned me. But throughout my life, growing and learning, I decided somewhere along the way that pink just wasn't for me. That I like green. I like orange. I like purple, red, white, maroon, plaid, yellow, tie-dye, rainbow. That a color cannot define me. That a piece of fabric cannot and will not ever be able to tell my story. That I do not need to wear blue to be a man. Besides, no one ever sees the color of your socks anyway.